Okay, so we've got this amazing array manipulation language. Um, but we, and we have really good notation too for scalars and vectors and even small vectors or vectors are the simple nesting. But we actually what we don't have is notation for rank. Even though APL is so matrix and so on, higher rank ar array oriented, we don't even have a way to write the higher rank array. And if we want further nesting, um, then it gets really hard to write on a, on a line of code. And now that we use namespaces so much, we don't have a notation for that either. We can construct them, but we don't have a, write, a way to write that. Um, why do we need to be able to, to write like that? Well, having, having data as, as plain text is a really valuable thing. Now, before I go any further, I want to say that this is not a presentation of what we're going to implement. This is just a proposal, and it's by no means final. Um, I would really like to hear feedback from you. Any thoughts, any comments um, would be really appreciated. So email me, adam at dialog.com, no accent marks, as you can see. Or um, grab me during the rest of the user meeting. Contact dialog somehow if we want to hear back from you. This notation that I'm, I'm going to propose um, is has several sources. I was mainly inspired by Phil last presentation in, in Sicily two years ago. Um, it's very similar to that. I had my own ideas, and I looked at various notations for, for constants in various programming languages. And um, again, the most important thing has been the discussions and feedback from people around me. Um, so really, do get back to me. That is really important. Now, for the things that, that we appear to need, um, these are, the re these are the re some of the reasons for it. Uh, Morton has already addressed that uh, storing code and, and data in text files has many benefits. And I think what I want to point out from these, you can see that you see it yourself, is especially the ability to see and edit your arrays. So imagine if you could use your, your favorite text editor to edit an APL array, if you could open up any APL array in the APL editor and edit it, not like currently get a read-only image of the array. Okay, because we're going to deal with more advanced arrays, I'm turning on, turning on boxing to the maximum level so we can see what's really going on. Now, let's go back to what we have a good notation for. Scalars, you all know this. We have simple vectors, we have small vectors of vectors. It really, if it gets any much more complicated than that, it's too much to write on a line. You have to start making multiple statements to construct your data. So this is what we're going to, to propose. Higher rank arrays. If you have a, an unfinished parenthesis on a line, that's clearly a syntax error. So we can take that syntax and extend that extend APL by assigning meaning to that syntax. Now, what's interesting is that this exact notation for a matrix isn't even new. Just two weeks ago, Jay Fope pointed out to me that in 1981, STSE published their nested array system. And as an ad hoc notation for what a matrix would look like, they used this exact notation. So full circle. I didn't know this before I came up with this idea. Moving on, more complex arrays. This would be a vector of some nested vectors. And by being able to spread it over multiple lines, we can keep some order on things in our, our things. And finally, we're going to go through a representation of namespaces in a literal text form. But one thing at a time. Okay, this is the simple vector that we all know and love. And it's clearly one-dimensional. One you can see it's on a single line. It stretches out from left to right. The, the box display of it shows a single arrow in its border, indicating there's a single axis. Now, we're going to take this notation, and we're going to stretch it out. 
you stretch out the vector into two dimensions, and you've got a matrix. Let's compare that. Let's say you want to construct a simple numeric matrix. So currently, you ha there are several different ways to do it, but a common one is this. I'm sure you've all done this. And the proposal next to it. Let's try a character matrix. You've probably also done something like this. And again, the proposed notation is pretty clean in comparison. And we can up the rank. Here's a 3D array. Now, there are multiple ways to, to write that and construct that, but none of the current ones are really very pleasant to work with. Um, one thing you can, you can notice here is that the difference between the, the box display output and the middle part of that is really just the normal output that APL gives when you have a 3D array in the session. Um, it's actually identical to, to what we have in the proposal, other than you replace these fancy borders with parentheses to show where the, uh, where the white space is. The, the APL display uses more and more lines of white space to indicate the rank, but of course, having code depending on white space is probably not a good idea. But the parentheses clearly shows which things are delimited where. Something else that's very common is to make a table of, of smaller arrays. And again, here's a different way to do it, uh, but it has to be constructed currently. And with, the, with this proposal, you can just see the table right there as it is. And we can also have a vector of vectors of vectors. And just like currently, you can, you can write it on, on multiple lines like this. Um, but the new proposal notation gives you more flexibility. If the, if the leaf vectors are very long, this gets unwieldy. And we can spread things out over multiple lines instead. So more flexibility like this. How do we put together all these arrays? What are the rules for it more formally? So first, we start off with taking each one of the statements that make up the array, what's inside this broken parenthesis, and we collect them into a list, list of items. And then we apply the monadic mix to that. Why is that relevant? It's because mix will make all the components uniform, extending their shape and their rank. And once they match each other in, in shape and rank, then they can be stacked on top of each other and generate an array of, of higher rank. So each statement inside a broken parenthesis is then one of the major cells, or in J language, major item uh, of the array. And the immediate parenthesis indicates that. And of course, uh, once when we evaluate this, we start from the, from the deepest level, um, evaluate the rank of that, collect things going up in the outer parenthesis, much like you currently evaluate any statement. Here's a big example of it, a couple of tables, data. You can see how the notation clearly matches the actual structure, quite literally. And that's basically the proposal for arrays. Let's move over to namespaces. Now, for namespaces, Boxing is not going to do us very much, so we'll turn that down a notch. Um, and how can we see a namespace? Well, version 16 comes with a great little tool up its sleeve, Quad JSON. You've already heard about it a couple of times. Some of you may have been to the workshop Sunday and had this presented and used it already. Now, JSON can give a visualization of simple AP APL namespaces. It can't show everything but it's a useful subset that they can show. Um, a little background, JSON, as was mentioned earlier, um, comes from JavaScript object notation. Um, it's become really popular for sending data between connected devices. Um, some programming languages have native support for this, like Python and Swift and now Dialog APL. And pretty much every other language in the world has one or more libraries to import and export JSON from their native array type or an object type. Now, there are various reasons why we cannot use JSON. Just there's somebody suggested that to me. Why don't we just take JSON and we adopt that as our notation for namespaces and arrays? And we can't do that because JSON already uses characters that would make this impossible in 
um, in APL uses curly braces and commas, so that's gonna, gonna clash. But if you pay attention, you will see that there is a very clear parallel between the JSON notation and the proposed APL notation. Um, you will immediately see uh, what the mapping is between them. So let's start off with a simple little namespace. It has just two members. As you see in the top left, this is how you would currently construct this. And you see my proposal on the right. Um, you see that you have names and you have values. And at the very bottom, you see a JSON notation. And now you can clearly see how the proposed notation maps to JSON. And JSON needs uh, quotation marks because it can have strange characters and names. Um, and you have a comma there. JSON is not white space sensitive, so it has to delimit with that. Whereas APL clearly delimits statements with, with lines. And we can also write a namespace on a single line. Currently, if you want to specify an entire namespace in a single line of code, you have to write this. Um, and with the proposed notation, of course, as you know, we can replace new lines with diamonds. So we can do that here, too. And here we've got a namespace. Parenthesis is, is the space. Every statement inside is speci specifies a member and its value. And you can again see how this is very parallel to the JSON notation. So how would that look in practice, not for such a simple namespace like this? Here's an example of a utility namespace. So we've got a little bit of everything in there. You can see I've used the multi-line array notation to have a matrix inside. We've got a character, normal character vector. We, we can even put functions in there. Of course, that doesn't work in JSON. Um, if you have functions, we can use expressions to generate values that would then populate the namespace. And we can even stick transfers in there. Um, as long as they're inside DELs, so they're clearly delimited, there's nothing preventing that from fitting right into the, into the notation. I think this is pretty neat. And one little note um, is for an empty namespace. I'm sure all those that have used namespaces have, <coughs> have done quite an S Zilda, quite an S quote quote to make an empty namespace. But by just taking out all the pairs of members and values, um, then we have an empty namespace. And as you can see, again, the parallel to JSON's notation for an empty JSON object namespace is very clear there. There's no ambiguity, and it fits nice into the pattern. We have an empty numeric vector with a zilda, empty character vector with a quote quote, empty defen with a brace brace, empty namespace with a paren paren. Now, this is the core of the proposal, really. Um, there are some related extensions I would like to go through, and we have enough time for that. If you've ever mixed, made some application that uses namespaces actively, then I'm sure you've had the problem of trying to populate a namespace under program control. That's not very fun. If you ever had to do that, you probably wrote something like this. In fact, we need that a lot. When you make a default install of, install of Dalek APL, uh, you get code that has this hundreds of times. So there's clearly a need for this. It, of course, the code that ships with Dalek APL is a bit special, but we bump into this quite often. So what if you could write just that? The current quad NS takes a simple character vector as its left argument, which is becomes the name of a named namespace. And therefore, if the left argument instead was a list of names, then there's no ambiguity. And you could just return a new namespace that was generated by pairing up these names with these values. So that's. One related extension we could do. Another one is something I'm sure you've had. You ever had to write a long constant vector of text vectors? Well, this is how we do it. Right? This is pretty error prone. You forget one enclose there, or you leave one out when you have multiple vectors on a single line, and <laughs> it, it ain't pretty. So wouldn't it be nice if you could just write this? In fact, wouldn't it be even nicer if you could align our code and make it look like this? Of course, you still need to double your quotes if they're inside a text vector. But that's just like you always do that. So this is how it works. If we have a line break inside, 
inside quotes, then clearly there's an uneven number of, of quotes, and that's invalid, so we can extend the syntax. Um, it becomes a vector of text vectors. Every line inside that long string is then an element in the overall vector, and we trim the white space trailing and leading so that you can line up your code correctly. You have to trim the left side, otherwise you have to have your text all the way to the left in your function. And on the right side, because it's really hard to ensure that there's no trailing white space on your, in your code. So if you trim this, it should just work out. Here's a summary for you. We've got the text vector, the vectors of text vectors. We've got arrays, which you can write in line with diamonds. You can write them multiple lines, so you get an actual image of your, um, of your arrays. Writing them in line gives you a way to serialize arrays. Namespaces, again, you can write in multiple lines. You can write in single lines. Names and values, separated by colons. And a way to generate a namespace from, a li from lists of names and values under program control. As I said in the beginning, I would really like to hear your feedback on this, hear your thoughts about this. Uh, is there something that bothers you? Do you have some any ideas? Please get back to me. Send me an email. Have my email address here. Grab me. And maybe we can make something great out of this. Thank you. So there's time for you to vent for 10 minutes. I would ask that the members of Team Dialogue let the customers have a go first. Um, how do you deal with a one row array? Yeah, well, one row array or one column array? A one row array would be very simple. Um, if you break the parentheses, so the, f the final parenthesis goes on a, on a new line, then it's become two-dimensional. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we broke the parentheses. This became a matrix, and it has only one row. Of course, we remove all empty rows, as we 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 saw that before. That if you write like this, it still works. Of course, right? we ignore the empty lines. This also means that you can put in comments into your arrays, so you can actually comment your arrays in line to show what this piece does, what this piece does. And of course, that means that if we, if we only have a single line, we can also write it separately like this. That we can align it nicely. That's a one row matrix. I don't understand something. Uh, first, I don't understand if when I start this, I'm still inside the APL. I mean, I can uh, put uh, expressions inside there, or yes. I am forced to be constant no, when no, no. I'm doing... There's, there's no reason why you cannot put an expression in here. So if you want, again, you can put this in a single line. So we can make a... Right, so the diamond signalizes a, a line break. Um, same thing as line break, and therefore this becomes a one row matrix, and it has three elements, iota three. Okay. You can put any expression in there. Yeah. The, this is probably the reason, uh, together with that, you decided to, to use just the normal parentheses for also for the namespaces, that you had to resort this strange column for what is normally a, oh. a left arrow. Well, the reason you can't do that is because if we have a name here... No, no, I understand why. Okay. Uh, if you, in one of the proposals that have been made uh, years ago, yeah. the idea was to put uh, uh, a couple of square uh, parentheses uh, to, to define uh, a, yeah, an be very space. So there are, different, there are different reasons for it. One is it because you could do... Oops. I like guess. Okay. So, the if this was to mean a namespace, 
Yeah. Then observe that these two assignment errors mean two different things. The first assignment error is inside the capsule of, of this member of the namespace, whereas the second, this assignment error, yeah. is signalizing that it's, it's a namespace. Right? Yeah. I think that we, we have to start to cut a finger to people who do use more than one uh, left arrow in a Well, <laughs> you say the, the fact that they serve two different purposes, I think it's, it's much clearer that here we're declaring that this name has this value. Yeah, I just, I'd just like to add one comment. Although you can use expressions in here, the whole point is to give you a literal notation for constants. It's already easy to construct arrays using expressions. That's not the point of this, although it will allow it. And another, another reason I should say is, well, it, it serves nicely, it, it, it fits nicely into, into a pattern, it maps nicely to what other languages use, and if we were to disambiguate using different types of parentheses, then our choices are braces, which are used for defense, and colon is not going to help you, assignment is not going to help you, that's out. Square brackets becomes ambiguous with um, with indexing. So, for example, if we write one, two, three, and like this, right, imagine we had an assignment error like that. Then, what do you make of this? Is that a four-element vector where the fourth element is a namespace, or is it indexing into this vector? And even if we could somehow disambiguate it. Like this, I'm not very keen on that kind of notation. <laughs> anyway, we've got... <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering what your take is on the namespace scripts and the way they're used and defined. Because um, it could be considered a type of notation because it's completely different to the way you would do it in more traditional APL programming. Well, it's... It fits dynamically in, you could use this inside a namespace script, you could have an entire namespace defined like this. It's, uh, this is a annotation that's more similar to defense, whereas the current colon namespace is a, is a very thread friendly way, we use the colon keywords things. Just like you can define a defense, you can find a thread friendly to do the same thing. You could write a literal namespace like this, or you could have an, a regular script like you have today. Uh, so if I wanted the ravel, ravel five, I had two parentheses, five parentheses. What do you, do you want me to write that? I want ravel five. Ravel five, right. So um, this brings up an interesting, interesting question. So currently, if you want an, a single element vector, you have to write this. Yeah. This notation doesn't necessarily give you um, a solution to that. Um, so there are different there are different ideas. We could open up this can of worms. One is, you might remember that I said that every statement inside a broken parenthesis is a major cell. And so Now, the major cells here have rank one, which means the entire array is rank two. But here, the major cells are rank zero. And so the entire array, potentially you could call that rank one, in which case this would be a one element vector. But that's a discussion point. It's something that I can, I think I should take the last question and I, I can come back to this if we still have time for it. No, um, it's, it's an interesting question, how to deal with this. Should this be a one element matrix or should this be a one element vector? I want, them something I, want, I want the, you obviously want to be able to do both. Well, um, that's not, not necessarily true, but let's, we can come back to that if there's still time, or we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah, the other thing, which you don't have to answer now, but to think about, is how, how I treat uh, empty arrays, empty, empty vectors of various, or empty, empty arrays of various shapes, and B, how I handle uh, non-displayable characters such as uh, carriage return, line feed, tab. Okay, so um, first question first, how do we handle empty arrays? This notation does not give you a um, any way different from what we currently have for empty arrays. And one reason for that is that empty arrays in APL need a prototype. And because this is a, 
a visual display of the data. If there's no data, there's nothing to see and there's nothing to provide you with that prototype. So you still have to use zero row something or construct this. It does not provide you uh, with that. How do you deal with uh, special characters? Well, the only really special character there is, for APL's perspective, is line breaking characters, character to a new line, and so on. Any other character can potentially go in between quotes. So it's just a matter of typing it. There's nothing there. You don't provide any other escape mechanism. I think it's, I've used the other string representation from other languages and they have all kinds of escape mechanisms for things. I think it's really nice, we have it so clean, there's one thing going on inside a string. If you have a quote, then it has to be doubled for obvious reasons and that's it. We shouldn't clutter that up. Your use of the colon as a separator, does that have any conflicts? I was thinking about um, old-fashioned labels, name, colon, nope. uh, in a function. If you're putting a function in there, nope, is cannot. there any conflict? In, in this notation, uh, such a colon can only happen inside, raw inside a parenthesis, not embraced in anything else. And in a tradfin, all colons for labels must appear immediately inside the function, and all colons for keywords must appear immediately inside the function, never inside a parenthesis expression, so it cannot clash. And in a defen, colon for, for guards, it uh, must appear immediately inside a defen, and this must appear immediately inside a parenthesis, and it cannot clash. Okay, thank you. Okay. Maybe if we were to decide to make control structures expressions that could return results at some point, there might be something then messy. In that case, it would, as far as I can tell, uh, let's see if we can be no worse than currently in a defin. Let's see if we can type this. Oops. And so on. How do we how do we deal with this kind of kind of thing? How would we deal with a variable next to a result returning control structure? What happens if you take away the white space there? Yeah. It's and still <laughs> it has to be inside parentheses. I, I don't I mean if you were to write like this sure and then continue something, then we might need to disambiguate this, but it probably wouldn't be worse than adding the spaces you currently need to disambiguate labels. So I don't think there'll be any clash there. That's only if yep. control structures return a result. Okay, well, I think the time is, the questions ran out exactly on time. So we have a half an hour coffee break. Thank you.